Hey, Roy Wright here, the CEO at the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety. Uh, and I just wrapped up a CEO panel with uh, another CEO um, from Flash. So, um, Leslie, um, we're sitting here at this conference that you have been pulling together for a good number of years, uh, the National Disaster uh, Resilience Conference. Let me just start, we're, I'm gonna talk about the panel we just did, but why does this conference exist? Why does the world need this gathering? Well, because there are so many conferences that we go to that are incredibly meaningful and helpful, and we learn everything, but when you look around the room, if you are a, say, floodplain manager, the other people there are all floodplain managers as well. And so the concept here is a smaller array of representation from all the many stakeholder segments. And as you know, there are so many, so many good things have to happen to create disaster resilience. So what we bring together are the academic, the private sector, the federal, the state, the local government, first responders, researchers, risk communication folks. Uh, we get homeowners, we get people who have been through events and all these different roles and professions around the common mission of how do we strengthen homes and safeguard families from disasters of all kinds. And over the years, you know, we always poll the attendees and we ask them, should we do this differently? Should we have a wildfire version and then an earthquake version? And they always give us a resounding no. We want to come be with people who have the same challenge, but they're completely different because that's when the learning happens. And the piece that's most exciting about NDRC is become known as an incubator. This is a great place to say, what if, why not, and how can we? And that's why it's exciting. Yeah, so um, we just sat on a panel, uh, Dr. Rick Knapp from Weather Channel, uh, tried to uh, somehow get six of us uh, around this uh, round table. Uh, and I'd love to go back to the book of faces uh, that are out here right now and give us a little bit of this because it was so striking, you know, whether we were dealing with folks on uh, colleagues of ours in the code space, uh, in the building science space, in the uh, building production space, uh, including 3D homes and different kinds of places, pieces of building. Um, but you kicked us off and you ended us uh, on this piece related to a dream home, an, an acronym, D R E A M. Um, real quick, what is that? So our vision for the new dream home of the future, working with all of our partners like you, is a home that meets all the values, not just some of the values that are traditionally siloed across buildings. So the dream home is a durable, resilient, energy efficient, affordable, and modern home, each and every time reliably delivered. And it is quite a dream and a vision that we know we can do. We feel like the science is there, the technology, now we just need to define it and go do it. As we went through this, it was it was a striking conversation uh, to have uh, a lot of questions. The room was like bubbling with the kind of feedback <laughs> of these elements. Uh, as we understand this, because most homeowners don't fully appreciate the durability and how long something is supposed to last. A component or as a whole, they got kind of a sense of resilience, maybe. They may be with one of the uh, perils, not the others. We talked about the elements on energy efficiency, which may be a little bit farther along. Um, but I want to use our little bit of time and come back with affordability because it was the most striking part of the conversation for me. Uh, as I listened to our colleagues uh, in that conversation, that too much of this is not yet available. Definitely not, and not with any kind of consistency. Some of our research that we've done in the past several years validated that one of our problems is there's no demand, and the reason is there's already confidence in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Eight out of 10 Americans that we polled extensively over a two year period said they were, they're good. They assume that the same level of safety and consistency and performance they get in their vehicle is, is going to be there for their house. house. So there's no big drumbeat demanding this from the industries that fulfill home building and, and selling and reselling of homes. And affordability, it's all over the place. There's, there's an affordable housing segment, but those homes sometimes end up being disposable because they're built so cheaply. There's a definitional problem. 
affordability doesn't mean how much it costs to buy a house. To us, it means how well it stands over time. So we're tackling that question of affordability with a cost study because every time you hear that an X price point increase knocks people out of home ownership, it's almost a defeating moment. And we've got to change that. We've got to redefine that whole piece because, um, and people are paying based on statistics a lot more household income for their homes. And we've got to, so there's all kind of, this is hard. Right? Yeah. So many different pieces. But I do think here at NDRC, especially this week, we have the people here that can solve this. Yeah, one last piece as we, as we go to wrap up um, uh, for folks here that are watching. What are the stats that one of our colleagues used? Uh, and put a bit more precision on it. Um, so, so the average home in America that people are living in is 41 years. So 1980 is the average. And again, there's people who live in a house that's 100 years old, and people who live in a house that was built. Uh, just a couple of years ago. What can you imagine is possible to bring dream level homes, not just on new construction, but for those of us who are living in something that's been around for a while? I think we can do it. I think technology is going to have to be our partner here. We're going to have to take your research and leverage technology and awareness to get there. I think, if, look at the roof. You're re roofing at some point if it's over 41 yeah, years. Making sure that homeowner knows when they go into re roofing what their opportunities are. Yeah. Right there for energy efficiency, for resilience, for affordability. You're going to click off those values. As we admitted in the panel, we don't know what modern means to everyone yet, yeah. but that's a catch basin that gives us opportunities to define it ourselves. I appreciate the partnership that we have shared uh, for many years uh, and the convening that we have there. Thank you all so much.